While motor vehicles might not be the first thing that everyone thinks of when they think of film and TV stars, there have been many vehicles throughout the history of entertainment that have become just as big of stars as the humans who drove them. Join Facts First as we take a look at the most iconic cars in film and television history. Back to the Future the first iconic car we'll talk about is the one that takes Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd back in time in Back to the Future and its two hit sequels. Of course, the car is a modified DeLorean, which was a popular luxury vehicle at the time. Though the DeLorean itself is now considered outdated, its iconic design has stayed in the cultural mind due to the trilogy. The DeLorean was the passion project of a former executive at General Motors, whose name was John Z. DeLorean. Several of the car's features have inspired more modern car designs, such as its door that opens up instead of to the side. If it weren't for Back to the Future, however, the DeLorean would likely have been lost to time. Bullet while the DeLorean from Back to the Future won over the public with its ability to travel back and forth through time, the 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback that's featured in the classic 1968 police thriller Bullet only needed its skilled driver to help win over the admiration of audiences. The car is the focal point of one of the most memorable car chases in cinematic history. Steve McQueen played Bullet, and the car that was used in the film was recently sold at an auction for nearly $4 million. Ferris Bueller's Day Off Those who have seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off may feel some anxiety when we mention the 1961 Ferrari 250 GT SWB California Spider featured in the film. Of course, the car didn't come out of the film in one piece, as Cameron accidentally sent the car flying out of an upper story window while in a rage over how his father was going to react to some excessive miles on the odometer. Before flying out the window, the California Spider serves as the vehicle that brings Ferris and his high school compatriots to downtown Chicago so they can experience the joys of their day off. The luxurious nature of the car causes it to be kidnapped by some wily parking attendants, and this is how the car ends up with its excessive extra miles. In auction, the vehicle has sold for roughly $18 million. Thelma and Louise while Thelma and Louise's car may not have been named alongside those two female stars in the title, it played nearly as important of a role. The car is a 1966 Ford Thunderbird, and it's the car that the two women drive off the cliff in during the film's memorable ending. Before driving off the cliff, we get to see the two outdrive innumerable cops down a desert highway, which proves a sight for the ages. Ghostbusters the ectomobile that serves as the titular Ghostbusting team's means of service in the film Ghostbusters and its sequel is a modified 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor. In the film, the car is something that the team pulls out of the garbage and revives because they can't afford anything better. But the vehicle went on to become an icon in the eyes of the public thanks to both its unique appearance and the team of men that used it to get around. Mad Max the original Mad Max featured a 1973 Ford Falcon XB GT Pursuit Special that helped the low-budget Australian film win over audiences. In the film, the car took part in numerous exciting car chases, though nothing featured in the film was quite as exciting as the car chases featured in its bigger budgeted follow-up, The Road Warrior. Still, the first film has a charm all its own, thanks in no small part to Mel Gibson and the iconic car his character drives. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. The Love Bug While the character of Herbie may have stood out more to audiences for the fact that he was alive, his iconic design also didn't hurt. The car was a 1963 Volkswagen Beetle, and it's been hard for audiences to look at one of these cars in real life ever since without wondering whether it has a mind of its own. The Italian Job while the 1969 film The Italian Job star Michael Caine went on to have an incredibly impressive career in the entertainment industry, he arguably doesn't stand as the film's most iconic star. Instead, that belongs to the Austin Mini Cooper S1275 featured in the film. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang the car from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was based off of a series of race cars that were designed by a man named Count Louis Zabrowski during the 20s. The design proved perfect for the film, which was based upon the novel by author Ian Fleming. Fleming is also the author of the James Bond series, the films of which have also introduced us to some incredibly memorable on-screen vehicles. Goldfinger We'll take a look at two iconic James Bond cars in this video, the first of which is the one featured in 1964's Goldfinger. The car is a 1964 Aston Martin DB5, and the film sees it stocked with a whole range of gadgets to help James outwit the bad guys. 
The model stands as one of the most prestigious from the Aston Martin brand thanks in no small part to Goldfinger. The Spy Who Loved Me Another iconic car featured in the Bond film series is the 1976 Lotus Esprit Series 1 that was featured in the 1977 film The Spy Who Loved Me. Memorably, the car could transform into a submarine to allow James to escape underwater, something the real version couldn't promise to its buyers. In 2013, eccentric billionaire Elon Musk purchased the modified version of the vehicle that was used in the film. Smokey and the Bandit the last iconic vehicle we'll look at before transitioning to iconic vehicles from TV is the 1977 Pontiac Trans Am from Smokey and the Bandit. The film featured the vehicle seeing a good deal of action as the two titular bootleggers attempted to outwit the authorities while sneaking alcohol from Texas to Atlanta. The Munsters there are also many iconic vehicles introduced via television series. One such vehicle was the car that the Munsters drove around in the 1960s show The Munsters. George Barris, who was known for his iconic custom car designs, designed the strange and monstrous vehicle specifically for the show, and it took him three weeks. Batman while there have been several memorable iterations of Batman's iconic car, the most classic is arguably the one featured in the 1960s program Batman, starring Adam West. This was another custom vehicle designed by the great George Barris, and he used the body of a Lincoln Mark II as the base. George ended up owning the vehicle after the show ended, and later sold it for $5 million in 2013. The Dukes of Hazard. Although Smokey and the Bandit may have been the first bootleggers with iconic cars, they weren't the last. Two years after the original film's release, the Dukes of Hazard came on the air with its beautiful 69 Charger, which was nicknamed the General Lee. In the show's memorable opening sequence, the car can be seen performing a jump of nearly 90 feet. This jump had to be done using cement to weigh down the car's trunk. Miami Vice in 1984, Miami Vice premiered. It featured a cool style that took advantage of its unique Miami setting, and it also featured a really cool car. That car was a black Ferrari Daytona Spider, and the bad guys knew they were about to get caught when they saw the vehicle pull up. The character of Detective Sonny Crockett, as played by Don Johnson, drove the vehicle. Starsky and Hutch the cops on Miami Vice certainly weren't the first cops on TV to have a cool car. The titular stars of Starsky and Hutch could also be seen pulling up to the scene in an iconic vehicle, that being a Ford Grand Torino with a unique red and white paint job. Charlie's Angels A year after Starsky and Hutch premiered, Charlie's Angels came on the scene. The three female agents each had their own Ford car. These included an orange Pinto, a yellow Mustang, and a Mustang Cobra II. Knight Rider the car featured a Knight Rider is more memorable for the fact that it could talk than for the fact that it was a Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, although the latter didn't hurt. The car's name is Kit, and David Hasselhoff drives it. The A-Team Finally, we'd be remiss to leave out the iconic A-Team van. The van was a customized G15 V8 cargo van, but it was the iconic occupants of the van that made it stand out the most. Now it's time to hear from you. Did we miss any vehicles that you loved? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.